Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to make an apple cider vinegar liquid shampoo. Over the past year or so, I've shared with you an apple cider vinegar cold process soap formula and also an apple cider vinegar body wash. Those videos are also here on my channel, so I hope you'll take a look at those as well when you're done watching this one. After I published the apple cider vinegar body wash, you guys have been requesting a shampoo and I've been working on that behind the scenes for a while now and I've come up with a really awesome formula that I'm obsessed with. I've been using it and testing it for some time now and my hair really does like it. So I'm very excited to be sharing this with you today. In this video today, I'm gonna to be going over my full step-by-step -step process and tutorial of how to put together this amazing apple cider vinegar shampoo. And if you would like the full recipe with amounts, percentages, links to where I purchased everything to make this shampoo, along with a very detailed step-by-step -step tutorial, please head on over to my Patreon campaign. This particular recipe will be at the $7 level and will also add to the apple cider vinegar collection that I have over there. So I hope that you check it out. I'll put the link to my campaign in the description box below for you. If you haven't had a chance to check out my campaign yet, I really hope you will. We have a community now of over 3,000 makers. There are several tiers, each with their own unique benefits. I offer things like live quarterly classes, live monthly hangouts, monthly gift packages, weekly tutorials, and so much more. We also offer coupon codes to my favorite suppliers upon sign up, making your sign up really well worth it. It's a five or $10 off coupon code to onlinelabels.com, depending on which tier you sign up for, and also a 10% off your, your purchase at makesy.com, which you can use over and over again. So again, I'll place the link to my campaign in the description box below. I really hope that you'll check it out. All right, let's make some apple cider vinegar shampoo. All right, so this formula is broken up into three phases. It's totally cold process, meaning we don't have to apply any heat or cook anything down. And all three phases can go into the same container while you're making it, which makes things super simple and convenient. This is a lovely, lovely formula. I really feel like I have outdone myself with this apple cider vinegar shampoo. I really feel it's one of the best shampoo formulas I've ever come up with, at least for my hair. I'm finding it's, my hair is, very shiny, silky soft, and very manageable. It has a beautiful rinse off profile when you're in the shower, so I'm very proud of it. But anyway, this is broken up into three phases. We have a water phase, a surfactant phase, and a thickening and adjusting pH phase. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add in our water phase ingredients. The first one includes some DL panthenol. So this is gonna be your pro vitamin, your B vitamin. This is great for hair strengthening and shine. We're going to go ahead and add in our DL panthenol. I happened to get this one from Brambleberry in a, in a powdered form. So we're just weighing off some DL panthenol. There we go. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and weigh off the water for this formula, and this will help to dissolve the DL panthenol, which is water soluble. Perfect. So then you might Give this a little mix at this point and get that powdered DL panthenol dissolved. All right, and once that's dissolved, you're ready to go ahead and add in the next ingredient. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my preservative. We are using Liquid Germol Plus. This is a great preservative for water-based formulas and it's great for a wide range of pHs, anywhere I think between four and eight on the pH scale. So this is a very versatile, effective preservative. There we go. The next thing we're gonna add into the water phase, again, these are all water soluble ingredients. We're gonna go ahead and add in some sodium lactate. The sodium lactate 
is a beautiful humectant. It's non-sticky. Sometimes glycerin can feel a little bit sticky or draggy in formulas. Uh, so I have opted for some sodium lactate for this one just to give it a nice humectant emollient type feeling without the stickiness. Sodium lactate is a natural product made from, I think, beetroots. I'll have to clarify that, but it's from it's plant-based. So we're going to go ahead. It's made from the sugars of some plant, I think, beets. So we're going to go ahead and add in our sodium lactate. Next up, we're going to be adding in some Lame Soft Pro. I got this from Voyager Soap and Candle. Lame Soft Pro is a mix of cocoa glucoside and glycerol oleate. We use this as a refatting agent because this is an oil-free formula. So we have to add in some refatting agents to make this feel luxurious and emollient in your hair and also give your hair that added moisture and emolliency. So this is why we're using this Lame Soft Pro. And I actually would not really recommend making a shampoo. I mean, there are substitutes, but I really feel like this is the best um, option, to be honest. We're gonna be adding a few of these types of ingredients to add in moisture to this formula. There we go, perfect. The next thing we're gonna be adding in is some polyquaternium seven or polyquat seven. This is used for also its emolliency. This is gonna add a ton of conditioning agents to the shampoo. So you also need to add in a conditioning type feeling. In solid shampoos, we use a different cationic ingredient called um, BTMS 50. In liquid shampoos, we can use polyquaternium 7 to give you that same beautiful moisturizing and it has a, light, a lovely rinse off. So when it rinses out of your hair, your hair feels nice and soft and conditioned. And in combination with the other ingredients that we're putting in here, it's just a wonderful addition. You can also use this in shower gels and body washes and hand soaps. Next up, we're gonna be adding in the protein. So all shampoos should have some sort of protein extract. You can use all kinds. They have broccoli, wheat protein, they have baobab protein, there's all types. Today we're gonna to be using hemp seed protein. And the protein just helps to strengthen the hair, strengthen and shine the hair. I got this protein at makingcosmetics.com a while back. I haven't actually, just in full disclosure, I need to check their website again soon. I haven't actually shopped with them in a while because their prices and shipping has gone way up, as with a lot of other suppliers, but in particular I feel the Making Cosmetics prices have gone up significantly and you can buy similar or the same ingredients at other suppliers. So I'll be listing in my tutorial where you can find other proteins as well. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be adding in some dimethicone satin. Dimethicone satin is a silicone that's gonna help just create a very silky, smooth texture, and that's how it's gonna make your hair feel, very silky smooth. If you don't have dimethicone satin, you could just use um, another, you could use cyclomethicone, you can use cetrimonium chloride, you can use something else in its place. I really like the way that this makes your hair, your hair feel satiny. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the cetrimonium, or not cetrimonium chloride, the dimethicone satin. There we go. give this a little bit of a stir before we move on to the next ingredient. Get everything well combined. All right. 
Next up, we're gonna be adding in the star of the show, and that is our apple cider vinegar. And this is just the Bragg um, organic apple cider vinegar with the mother that I got from the grocery store. As you can see, I'm almost done with this bottle. Um, now you might be asking yourself, why would I wanna put apple cider vinegar in my shampoo? Apple cider vinegar may have some benefits of helping to cleanse the hair of products, oil buildup, dirt, it also helps with shine and protecting hair color. You guys, I've definitely noticed with my own hair, I do get my hair color treated, and I definitely notice with my own hair that the shine has really improved in my hair um, with this shampoo and the manageability, and it hasn't affected the color at all. It also has been known to add volume to your hair, which I also have noticed, and it can help to relieve itch and dandruff and it can encourage hair, which can encourage hair growth, I guess. So, um, of course, you can't make any claims about your shampoos, but these are just things that other people have noticed with using apple cider vinegar shampoo. And as well, you can purchase apple cider vinegar shampoo at the grocery store or any department store. So I am not using a ton of apple cider vinegar in this formula, and that's for two reasons. So apple cider vinegar can also decrease the pH of something, but you have to use quite a bit of it to decrease, to actually really decrease the pH of something. Um, for instance, we're gonna try to get this, we're gonna be getting this shampoo formula down into the 4.5 to 5 pH range. And to use apple cider vinegar to get it down that range, you would have to use a whole lot. And therefore your formula then smells like apple cider vinegar which can really smell like a salad dressing so there are a couple reasons why so and then the other reason why I am not using a whole ton of apple cider vinegar in this formula is because in my research about how other manufacturers make the apple cider vinegar shampoo it seems to me just in, when you're reading the ingredients in a descending order of ingredients that apple cider vinegar runs somewhere on the lower end of the list of things which means that other makers and manufacturers aren't using a whole ton of it either. And let me tell you, the amount that I'm adding into my formula seems to be perfect. It seems to be like the perfect amount. You don't need a whole lot of something to make it good. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the apple cider vinegar and I'll explain to you too in a minute about the fragrance of choice here. All right, the last thing we're gonna be adding to the water phase is actually not a water, it's an oil. So we're gonna be using the Honey Spiced Pear by Midwest Fragrance Company. This seems to go very well with the apple cider vinegar smell that's gonna be in your shampoo so that it kind of complements the smell of the apple cider vinegar. This is a really, really beautiful kind of, uh, it's got like fall and Christmas type spices, but it has a really beautiful fruit and honey note to it as well, which pairs really nicely with the apple cider vinegar. So we're adding this into the water phase because I wanna go ahead and add in my surfactant phase last. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our honey spiced pear. You guys have probably, if you're familiar with my apple cider vinegar body wash, I used the same fragrance for the body wash and I've gotten a lot of compliments on the pairing of the apple cider vinegar with this particular fragrance oil. You could also use any type of like apple, wintry candy apple, or apple fragrance as long as you're using it in skin safe quantities. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up now, but as you're gonna see, this will go a little bit opaque and that's just due to the fragrance oil and everything mixing together. And it will go back to a clear formula as soon as we add in our surfactants. So this is what I mean, this is totally normal. You're gonna get sort of a clear, kind of opaque looking solution before you add in the surfactants. All right, now we're moving on to the surfactant phase. The next thing we're gonna be adding in is some cocomidal propyl betaine. This, as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, is my favorite surfactant 
super gentle, it's got a relatively low pH, biodegradable, made from coconuts, and sulfate free. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our cocomidal propyl betaine. Now, once you start adding in your surfactants, you're gonna start to kick up a little bit of bubbles and foam. That's why in most formulas I like to add it last. Now, the surfactants are the cleansing, the lather, the bubble, the foam. That's what's adding into this formula. Adding the surfactants is gonna add the cleansing agent, the bubbles, the lather, and the foam. So the next surfactant that we're gonna be using, this is a little lesser known, although I have seen it, it's gaining a little bit more popularity and it is pretty easy to find now. I got mine at makeyourownbuzz.com or makeyourown.buzz. And this is loramidal propyl betaine. This is also an amphoteric surfactant. It's a lot like cocoa betaine, except I feel that loramidal propyl betaine has a very emollient feeling to it. So I really like it for that reason. Um, and it adds a lot of foam and just kind of moisturizing bubbles to your formula. All right. And then the last surfactant we're gonna be using and this is just to go along with our apple theme and it's another super gentle surfactant we're going to be using some foaming apples this came from windy point soap making supplies and foaming apples is sodium cocoa apple amino acids so it's really made from apples it's very mild it's an anionic surfactant and it's just gorgeous this is you can use this in shampoos facial washes it's a great Place for this micellar waters um, foaming apples is great in those type of formulas so we're gonna go ahead and add in as you can see my formula is going back to a clear state and there's our foaming apples and we're gonna remove from the scale and we're just gonna start to give this a very gentle stir to combine the surfactants in with the water phase ingredients the surfactants that I'm using here have a little bit of solubilizing property, meaning it will help the oils and water-based ingredients combine. Of course, if you add too many oily type ingredients, they will separate. It just has a little bit of solubilizing properties. Okay. Now that these are combined, I'm going to go ahead and I know the pH on this is right around a 6, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the pH and check the pH. We're going to adjust the pH with a little bit of citric acid. All I'm going to do is put a little bit of citric acid in here, mix it around, and then test my pH to make sure I'm getting it down into a hair and scalp friendly range. That's a big thing with liquid shampoos and solid shampoos, in fact. If your pH is too high, then your hair is going to feel squeaky clean and it's not going to feel great. It's going to feel a little tangly and squeaky clean. So you want to bring that pH down to a hair loving pH, which is going to be in the 4.5 to 5.5 range. Even a 6 is okay, but for me I find a 6 is still a little too harsh for my hair. So I'm going to bring this pH down and bring you back for the thickening phase. All right, so I've brought the pH of this down to about a five, and I just did that with a little citric acid. It was, again, like I said, right around a six before we lowered it, so I'd like it to be a little bit lower. So we're gonna go ahead and thicken this formula up to a shampoo consistency. Right now, it's just very water thin, um, and we're gonna be doing that with a little bit of liquid Crothix. Uh, a lot of times I use glucose D. You guys know I use that a lot because a little bit of it goes a long way in most surfactant-based formulas. I'm using Crothix here because of its emolliency. Crothix adds a bit of emolliency to a product like a hand soap or a shampoo you will feel just kind of a silky rinse off feeling so that's really a great thing to add in your shampoos so we're going to go ahead and use crothix today by the way i have tried this recipe with some cationic guar gum and it just was not my favorite it didn't thicken up to the consistency that i liked and i found after a few days the 
goo argon was a little bit problematic and that it wanted to separate out of the formula, which can happen sometimes, um, not all the time, but it does happen occasionally with certain formulas. So I found that the Crothix in this formula really works the best and a little bit goes a long way as well. So this is just an as desired, a lot like the glucose D, an as desired, as needed. You just pour in a little bits at a time and stir it up until you get your desired consistency. That can sometimes you can get your formulas too thick and then it's very hard to get them to the right consistency. So just go slow with this. Once you get a formula that's too thick, really the only way I found to kind of remedy that is to make a whole nother batch of it and then add it to the thick batch. Because if you start adding water to thin it out, uh, it, that can, that's easier said than done. You might get yourself caught in this game of thickening and thinning for a while and then you've added a lot of volume and you have to add more preservative and you've diluted out your surfactants. So I really think the best way, if you have overdone it on your thickener, is just to make a new batch and add it into your thick batch. So we are gaining a little bit of viscosity. And I'll bring you back when it's nice and thick. All right, so we've brought this up to a beautiful kind of shampoo consistency. Just a gorgeous viscosity. It's not gonna get like draggy or sticky in your hands or your hair. It's just the perfect shampoo consistency. And this formula will go crystal clear after it has time to sit. So we're just gonna go ahead now and pour the formula into our little containers here. I've got a eight ounce PET container that holds about 10 fluid ounces and a little four ounce glass bottle here. I'll probably give this one to my mom. Usually I give my mom all my little formulas that I've been working on or I'll give them to friends and family. So that's typically what I do. Sometimes my patrons in my $25 tier will get some of these formulas that I don't sell on my website. Okay, there's that one. And here they are all bottled up looking gorgeous and natural. Let's go ahead and do a product demo. All right, so I'm just gonna show you this in my hands because I wanna give you an idea of what the lather looks like. It's just such a creamy and gorgeous lather. So this is my personal little batch I've been using and testing. So we're just gonna go ahead and wet, wet down my hands, put a little bit, a little bit of this goes a long way too. See, it's a totally clear formula. You can't really see it in my hands. Um, adding a little bit of water to activate the foam and lather. And right away I'm getting these beautifully silky, hydrating, conditioning lather. I would say this is a perfect formula for anyone with dry or damaged hair. I would even think that curly haired people could use this as well just because it's super moisturizing. Even though it's got that apple cider vinegar in there that can be cleansing and clarifying, it's just a gorgeous formula that has both the clarifying and the conditioning properties to it. And there it is everybody. That's how you make a beautiful 
apple cider vinegar shampoo. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments and questions below. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Share this video with a friend and why not subscribe to my channel? All right, everybody. Catch you on the next video. Bye. Keep shining.